Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are doing fantastic and great. I am doing great. I have been busy today, but it's okay. I've been trying to learn a song. Um, after about a year, I'm going to do a special tomorrow. And God has asked me to do it a cappella. So it's going to be interesting, but... I actually grew up singing a cappella, so I'm probably more at ease than trying to fit a song into music. And so since I couldn't find a key that um, I could fit into, I'm doing my own key. But I did a video, I shared it on um, this page, and I want to talk about this song tonight. And I also want to talk about... Um, our final destination, heaven. And uh, we can only imagine, you know, here on this earth, we can only imagine what it's going to be like. But I just wanted to read uh, Revelation 21 and maybe parts of 22, which really describe how wonderful it's going to be. And I wanted to just go over a list of things that we're going to have in heaven that we don't have here. And uh, it may be short tonight because I need to go feed my child. I'm starting 30 minutes later. Uh-oh, everything. I actually cleaned my desk off. How are things just falling in the floor? Huh. All right, I guess I didn't finish cleaning my desk off. But while I do this, I'm going to listen to this song over and over that I'm trying to learn. I won't sing it to you, though. I just want to listen to it. I'm trying to get the timing and everything down when you do things a cappella, especially since I'm doing it with a video, um, it's a little bit more challenging. But I want to jump into prayer. It's not very loud. Yeah, a little bit louder. Okay, I got 71% there. I got this one on a charger. I got this computer plugged in, so we're good. Okay, well, let's jump into some prayer. Um, I had to move my computer today because my cat was in my chair. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Okay, I just don't really like to look like a floating head a lot. Okay, God, we just... We just come to you, God, and we just want to thank you. We know that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. You have brought us so much rain, God. And I know that the grass, the trees, the flowers, and all the animals, God, are going to benefit from it. Maybe our rivers will get cleaned out, too. I don't know whether our rivers flooded or not. Excuse me. But God, we just praise you because you are mighty and magnificent and powerful. There is no God like you. There is nothing that you miss, God, from your throne. God, you have prepared a place for us that is perfect, that has no flaws, that has complete peace, joy, and love. Every day, there is no need for sun because you and your son, Jesus, light the whole city, God. And we know that you have us on assignment here, God, but we look forward to the day that we can walk into that beautiful, magnificent place called heaven that you've created for us. God, thank you for being our creator. Thank you for being our provider, our protector, our sustainer, our shelter. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge, God. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, but yet you are loving and kind and patient and faithful. And you are trustworthy, God. We can trust you with all that we have. God, we just pray for um, the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, please soften their hearts, open their hearts to the truth. 
God, we pray for the prodigals. We pray for them to see where they are and to realize that they need to return to you. They need to repent of their sins and return to you, God. That you are waiting with your arms wide open for them. God, we pray for all the tragedies that are happening, God. We just pray that you would be with these people and that they would feel your presence, God. That maybe through this tragedy it will draw them to you. And that maybe people will come and be the hands and feet of Jesus for them to show the love and compassion of Jesus. God, just uh, we just pray that you meet their needs where they are. And God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. Help them to feel your presence in the absence of their loved one in the time of their sorrow, God. Just pray that um, they would be reminded that their loved one is in a place that we can't even describe here from earth. The only description we have is in your word, God. We just praise you and thank you, God, for calling us as your children. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, we kind of have vibrant colors on tonight. Heaven is supposed to have vibrant colors. Um, there's so many things, so many things about heaven that are going to be so awesome. Sorry, I'm just going to keep listening to this song over and over again. I'm learning, subconsciously learning um, timing and everything. Okay, well, let me read what I wrote on Facebook. There we go. So I did share this video, and this is my video that I did. And I, I added two, two slides to the end of this one and resaved it and renamed it. Just, um, it was Demo. I named it Demo 2. Um, but this song is by Mercy Me, and it is not a new song, but it is one of my favorite songs and has ministered to me so many times through the death of um, friends or family, um, even church family, you know, people that you praise and worship with every week, praising and worshiping with them this week and next week, they're praising and worshiping in heaven. But it's okay, I don't believe that I would call any of these people back because what they have in heaven is so much better than what we have here on earth. So this is what I wrote. I said, I love this song and message by Mercy Me, and I absolutely love the story behind the song with the same name. I do. I love the movie, too. I've seen the movie. And uh, Bart Millard is a very impressive man. He was an impressive young man, too, to withstand everything that he went through and still to come out to be a good Christian man and to um, forgive his father also for abusing him for all those years. But that's not what I wrote in here. So I made this lyric video many years ago and I wanted to share it today. I just now uploaded it to YouTube today. The pictures are so beautiful and really make me long to see how heaven really looks, but I can wait until it's time according to God, by either it being my expiration date or time to meet Jesus in the air. With all that is transpiring, we need to keep our eyes on our reward up ahead. We can really only imagine how beautiful heaven will be. We have descriptions in, in the Bible, and there are so many pictures that can be found. I just really believe that the beauty could be indescribable, and we have to see it to believe how beautiful it is. Someday we will all know the beauty, the complete peace, joy, love, and goodness that it holds for us. There are so many things that we can only imagine in heaven. Until then, we have an assignment here, and that is to share God's truths, in the gospel of Jesus, the reward of heaven will come in God's perfect will and timing. Many of our loved ones no longer have to imagine, but know fully 
all that we are imagining about heaven. I miss their presence, their smiles, and their voice, but I know that all the things that we imagine about heaven is their home forever. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So I don't know about you, but I do long to um, see heaven. But I don't want to go until it's time. And I'm willing to just wait on God's perfect timing. And that's kind of what I wrote here. Well, in the meantime of me like doing this video and everything, um, I also found a book that I have read in the movie that I have seen about heaven. Heaven is for Real by Todd, Todd Burpo about his son Colton, Colton Burpo. Colton Burpo is a young adult now. This happened so long ago. Um, oh, everybody's contacting me. I'm sorry, Brian. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> sorry. Um, he has a question. I'm sure he probably wants, okay. All right. Well, anyway, I've read this book, and I don't know whether you've read it or not, but it is so awesome. And, um, uh, I just want to read the back of it, I think. I did find some things in here that gave some description about um, heaven and what Colton said about heaven and um, it is so good and he talked about I'm just gonna read the back of this when Colton Burpo made it through an emergency appendectomy, his family was overjoyed at his miraculous survival. When they weren't expecting, though, what they weren't expecting, though, was the story that emerged in the months that followed, a story as beautiful as it is extraordinary, detailing their little boy's trip to heaven and back. Colton, not yet four years old, told his parents he left his body during surgery and authenticated that claim by describing exactly what his parents were doing in another part of the hospital while he was being operated on. He talked of visiting heaven and relayed stories told to him by people he met there, whom he had never met in life, sharing events that happened even before he was born. He was he also astonished his parents with descriptions and obscure details about heaven that matched the Bible exactly. Though at four, he hadn't learned how to read. Though he had not yet learned to read. With, dis with disarming innocence and the plain spoken boldness of a child, Colton tells of meeting long departed family members. He describes Jesus, the angels, how really, really big God is and how much God loves us. Retold by his father, but using Colton's uniquely simple words, <clears throat> heaven is for real, offers a glimpse of the world that awaits us. Whereas Colton says, nobody is old and nobody wears glasses. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Let me add that to my list. No glasses. That's awesome. We all have perfect eyesight. Heaven is for real, real will forever 
change the way you think of eternity, offering the chance to see and believe like a child. This is an excellent book. I absolutely recommend it. And the movie, if you want to just get the cliff notes, watch the movie. But it is so good. And I'm not going to read excerpts from it, but it is so good. You could probably um, get it on Kindle and read it on your phone. It is so amazing. I just keep, I just keep listening to this song. They don't have a repeat on YouTube. Okay, well, let me get a drink of water because my throat's a little scratchy. All right, so um, <clears throat> I want to read a description from the Bible. That was Colton Burpo's um, description. And Colton Burpo also, I heard in an interview, they said, what... <laughs> They said, they said, why do you think, what do you want to do since you came back? He said, I've been to heaven and it's beautiful and I want to take everybody back with me. Well, that's quite a little evangelist. I bet you that he is quite a little evangelist, that young man. Okay, so we're going to skip over all the bad stuff in Revelation because there's some pretty scary stuff in there. And we're going to skip to the good stuff, which is what John saw. That's what John saw, this picture over here that I have. Let me see if I can flip my computer around to where you can see it. You can see it better on the YouTube video. It's not quite showing all of it. So that is a picture of heaven coming down to the earth. And so this is what John saw. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write these, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God in her lights. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear and crystal. And had a wall great and high and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, 
and names written there on. Oh, I don't want to do this song. Okay. Okay, written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So the twelve gates have twelve names, and they are the names of the tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So all of Jesus' apostles have a foundation named after them. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it were all equal. I'm thinking a square, if everything's equal. And um, we studied this like many years ago. And I think it was like three football fields square. Like the length, the height, the width. Everything was that But I could be wrong, too. It's been many years ago. But I think I remembered right. But I'm not sure. Okay. In the city... Okay, I already read that. And he measured the wall thereof in hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. In the building of the wall of it was jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. So the whole city is like this transparent gold is all I can think of that it would be as a transparent gold. The whole city is transparent gold. Um, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus. I don't know what that is. The eleventh, the jacinth, and the twelfth, an amethyst. I know. I know what all those are, uh, but I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it. I have heard of the others. Um, I've probably read it before, but probably stumbled over it. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Whew. That is so lovely. That is so lovely. So let's continue to the tree of life. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall be in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So the, the inhabitants will have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. And I want to read you some more in 22. I wasn't planning on reading 22. But I'm going to go get my child situated. 
apparently he doesn't like what he's watching. So I'll be right back, and I'm so sorry. But I'm the only parent in the house right now. Mm. Come on. Let's go. Nearly fell. I wouldn't be back if I nearly fell. <laughs> I'd be going to heaven because I nearly fell backwards and I would have hit my head. Okay, well I'm back now. <laughs> Sorry for the disturbance, but as parents we gotta do what we gotta do. He wasn't enjoying what he was watching, so he's gonna come in here and disrupt me if he's not. Okay, so let's continue reading 22, because it's so good. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and, out of, and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These these sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. That's Jesus saying that. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is just, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. That's Jesus. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Okay, was that the tree of life that we read about? Yes, yes. So if we do right, we have right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into this city. Uh, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. 
and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I love the end of Revelation. I just love it. I mean, I love this whole book. But it is one of my favorite parts. It has a most perfect ending. The people that do um, what's right. Oh, he unsent it. These teenagers, they have like zero patience. I was going to answer him, but I'm kind of busy right now. Okay, so that is what I wanted to read to you. That is like the description I wanted to read to you because it's so beautiful. But then this is Perks for Life in Heaven. And uh, our final destination. So God and Jesus are our light. We just read that. The Lamb of God reigns. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's a huge perk. No, no night, no sleep, no tears, no fatigue, no bills, no money, no tragedies, no wars or threats of wars, no sin or turmoil, no schools, no illness, no government or man's laws. Contentment. Only contentment, the love of Jesus, one church under Jesus, joy and peace, beautiful colors, beautiful streets, music. You know, some people that have been to heaven and have come back say that the flowers, the trees, everything has their own song, their own worship to God. And I think that would be neat since I love music. Praise and worship, dwelling places or mansions. Temple of the Lord, precious yeah. stones, tree of life, gates of pearl, clean, pure water, reunion with loved ones. You know, I look forward to that. I have many loved ones that have gone, have been gone for a while. And I just look forward to seeing their faces again and seeing their smiles. And um, Colton Burpo says that... Um, when he went to heaven, his experience was that everyone was about the same age and, like, not old. There wasn't a, an age progression. There was, like, kind of one age range. And, uh, like, some people say that everybody's 33, the same age as Jesus, when he died. And I, I could live with 33. 33 was a good year for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a. Huh. It would work. It would work. Okay. So let me read. Um, I guess that's just going to be in here with us until I get through. I'm not going to be on here for very long because I need to feed him. So let me read my quiet time today. It wasn't too terribly long because I knew that I had things that I needed to do. Okay. So, uh, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. Embrace the new day, child. Practice, practice, practice. Well, he's talking about practicing this song. Which I'm going to get some um, practice in soon. 
like after I get him fed, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mm-hmm. practice. Then I'm going to take the rest of the night off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities mm-hmm. to share your truth and the gospel of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I will embrace this new day, God, mm-hmm. and I will be thankful. Mm-hmm. Not bitter for the way some people mm-hmm. treat me. Mm-hmm. I was having a little struggle this morning. Um, mm-hmm. I know this life in this world is fleeting and but a vapor and what is to come with you Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all that have gone before me will be so much better I embrace the fact that our generations were created for these hard times to stand for your truths to live in the present and to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. He said, Yes, child, it is true. Your generations your generations were created to share with the younger generations. My truths in the gospel of Jesus. The love and compassion of Jesus too. It is a hard job, but I need the ones called to keep doing it. It is a job that you rarely feel appreciated for, but the rewards are with me. Remember that always, with all tasks that you do, the rewards are with me, and they far outweigh your hurt feelings. And I said, I hear what you say, God, and I see it in your word also. This all is temporary, and what you have for us is so much better. Help me to focus on the prize at the end of my Christianity journey. Help me to focus on the experience of tomorrow. Help me only to glorify you, God, to put all worldly things aside and focus on you and the rewards in heaven to come. Remove me from this song. Replace me with the Holy Spirit. I want to sing in the Spirit to you. I want to bring peace to those who are hurting also. God, you are our comfort and strength, our peace and wholeness. Help me to express that. He said, He said, Child, drop out of the things of the world and focus on me today. Get work done also. Do not be sedentary. Keep moving. Make good choices in this new day for my glory. And I said, okay, God, I will do all that you ask of me. Thank you for meeting me today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. Work for me today. Practice for me today. Walk with Jesus today and reap the blessings of obedience. Focus on me, child. The reunion is soon, child. And soon all the earth will be a distant memory and physical place. The reunion will be so beautiful, child. I can't wait for all of my children to see what they can only imagine. And I'll say Maranatha God. Because Maranatha means come Lord Jesus. Or, or so come Lord or something like that. But it, that's what it means. Okay, I looked it up one day. I googled it. Okay, well it is time for us to invite somebody into heaven. It's God's heaven. It's God's heaven. It's not my heaven. I have a hard time like there we are. Getting both in the picture. Okay. So this is God's invitation into heaven, his heaven. So God's invitation into his heaven. Have you ever been invited? Have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. And so here are some scriptures that go with salvation through Jesus. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 
But God mm-hmm. commandeth his love oh. toward us in mm-hmm. that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for mm-hmm. us. Romans 5, 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ mm-hmm. our Lord. Romans six twenty three. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. John fourteen six. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans ten nine through eleven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans ten thirteen. So this, again, is what we read, Revelation 21, 2 through 3. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. Seth, please be quiet. I'm sorry, I have background noise. Okay. So this is the salvation prayer. Um, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for my sins you were buried for three days and rose from the dead I believe that you are God's one and only Son. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Oh, that's a good amen, Seth. Okay, so if you said this prayer and you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We just read about that, that whoever's name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will not enter heaven. And the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. And when Jesus comes, you will be going with Jesus. For now, we can only imagine what heaven's like. But soon, we'll know exactly what heaven's like. So, in order to grow closer to your Savior... Read God's Word and start in Matthew. Read in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. Read Mark. Read Luke. Read John. Then read Acts and Romans. 
Let's read through the New Testament. It's just really hard for new believers to start in Genesis and read all the way through. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that people can't, but it's really hard. And if you learn more about Jesus, you learn more about your Savior and what he did for you, then it's, it's easier later to read that. Okay. Well, I think I did everything that I came here to do. I'm going to give you God's blessing. I've got to go feed my child. Um, I do recommend Todd Burpo's book, Heaven is for Real. Story told by four-year-old Colton Burpo. Okay, so Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need some peace. We're going to have perfect peace in heaven and perfect love and perfect goodness and perfect joy. That's all going to be perfect. Things of the world will not be able to interrupt nothing evil will be there only light and brightness and love the love of God the love of Jesus the love of the Holy Spirit and everyone that made it before us all right well my pray and share warriors I gotta go so um, have an awesome rest of your evening and have an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day that we go and worship. Pray for me as I sing tomorrow because uh, I have not sang in a very long time. I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit, and that I can sing in the Spirit. It's amazing when that happens. I want myself removed. Okay, well, much love. Much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.